Everybody sing it with me. It's the most doctorful time of the year. Doctor Who and the festive season go together like River Song and Shooting Hats. When the show returned to our screens in 2005, we were treated to a special episode on every Christmas day. Until that tradition got bumped to New Year's Day from 2019 onwards. Thank you, Chris Chibnall. So with the festive season upon us, what better time to rank every single Christmas slash New Year special from the modern era of the show? Now, you might not agree with our ranking, and that's fine. In fact, you should check out the original article written by the wonderful Jacob Simmons because my ranking is different to his. Let us know yours in the comments below, and hey, if a massive argument over something trivial doesn't sound like Christmas to you, then what does? So with that in mind, I'm Ellie with Who Culture here with every Every festive special ranked from worst to best. Number 17. Revolution of the Daleks Premiering on New Year's Day 2021, Revolution of the Daleks had a lot of hard work to do to win fans round from the controversial Timeless Child reveal. Did it do this? Not really. In fact, it barely even tried. The story tries to pull together all the loose ends of the previous season while introducing a plot about a new breed of Daleks attempting to take over the Earth. It's a decent enough adventure, and the return of John Barrowman as Captain Jack Harkness was long overdue, but overall, Revolution of the Daleks was just... meh. Also, it wasn't festive in any way, shape, or form, which is a big no-no for a festive special. Number 16, The Return of Doctor Mysterio Airing on Christmas Day 2016, this episode sees the Doctor accidentally grant superpowers to a young boy before teaming up with his older self to battle a race of living brains. Now when you put it like that, it sounds pretty mental, doesn't it? Now the title of this episode is enough to send cringe-inducing shivers down anyone's spine, and unfortunately that kind of rings true of the actual story itself. It's a fairly cheesy kind of parody of the comic book movie craze, with actor Justin Chatwin doing his very best Superman impression as the ghost. Now, it's a fun experiment for sure, but ultimately the episode doesn't feel very Doctor Who-ish. It also doesn't really feel as festive as it should have, considering it was a Christmas special. Number 15. Resolution Poor Jodie Whittaker never got an actual Christmas special as the Doctor, as her first festive episode started the trend of episodes airing on New Year's Day rather than the 25th of December. Resolution was a decent outing for 13 and her three chums, but again, it was fairly uninspired. It was a fine one-off story about a scout Dalek running amok on Earth, but the episode never really got going and leaves you wanting more. It also has one of the lamest endings in recent memory, with the Dalek being beaten by a micro. Wave. Considering that this was the only episode of the show that aired in 2019, it was very disappointing. Although that scrap metal Dalek casing was pretty cool. Number 14. The Doctor, the Widow and the Wardrobe 2011's The Doctor, the Widow and the Wardrobe is an odd episode. The only real baddie is pollution, as a group of sentient trees try to escape a planet set to be devoured by acid rain. They eventually do this by hijacking the brain of a woman from World War II era Britain who guides them to safety. It's unconventional, but a real thinker. Is this what you want at Christmas? Probably not, but the stunning shots of snowy forests and the actual wood creatures themselves are so Christmassy that it almost makes up for it. It was okay, but not as good as it could have been. Number 13, Eve of the Daleks. Now, Eve of the Daleks is the most recent episode on this list, airing on New Year's Day 2022. The Doctor and her companions, Yaz and Dan, find themselves trapped in a time loop with yet another Dalek. These guys really hate New Year's, don't they? The Doctor must figure out a way to escape the loop, which has conveniently tied itself in with the countdown to the New Year. Of course, she manages to do this, and everyone lives happily ever after. Well, everyone except the Dalek, obviously. With a creative premise and some standout character moments, for Yaz, Eve of the Daleks is a perfectly alright if ultimately forgettable episode of the show. Number 12, The Next Doctor Doctor Who went on a bit of a gap year following the end of Series 4 in 2008, cropping up every now and then with a special episode before disappearing for months at a time. Now, the first of said specials transmitted on Christmas Day 2008 and starred David Tennant as the Doctor and David Morrissey as the Doctor. Well, Morrissey actually played Jackson Lake, a man who believed he was the Doctor. He even had his own companion in the form of Rosita. <laughs> Rosita? Rose? Do you get it? 
The episode did have an intriguing premise, but it kind of failed to follow it up. It became quite apparent pretty early on that Lake wasn't actually the Doctor, and then the rest of the plot involved these weird Cyberman dog things which were actually quite creepy in the way that they moved, and a giant robot attacking Victorian London. In hindsight though, there are a lot of similarities between the interactions between the Doctor here and Jackson Lake who thinks he's the Doctor, and that reveal we had when Joe Martin's fugitive Doctor also revealed that she was the Doctor. Number 11. The Unquiet Dead Okay, yep, we have broken our own rules here. The third episode of Doctor Who's revival run, The Unquiet Dead, was first broadcast on the 9th of April 2005. As I'm sure you'll agree, that is not Christmas. Not even close to Christmas. However, the events of the episode do take place during the festive period. It also revolves around Charles Dickens, ghosts, and a Christmas carol is even mentioned in the episode, with writer Mark Gatiss being a huge fan of that story. Plus, Nine never got an official Christmas special, and we kind of felt sorry for him. So, let's examine this episode. It was... it was alright, wasn't it? The story of the girl wanting to kill everyone and possess their bodies was good fun, and we met our first New Who historical figure in the form of Mr. Charles Dickens. So yeah, this was a pretty good one actually, and it was very Christmassy despite the fact that it aired in April. Number 10. The Snowmen in this 2012 Christmas episode, the 11th Doctor is dragged out of retirement by the curious case of living snowmen in Victorian London. He discovers that Frosty and his friends are being controlled by the Great Intelligence, an old nemesis of his that has returned with Ian McKellen's voice. This is also the second Doctor Who appearance of Jenna Coleman, playing yet another version of the mysterious Clara Oswald. Don't get too attached to this one though, because she doesn't last very long. Now, while the snowmen did do a lot to establish future plot points, it kind of failed to make effective use of its villains. McKellen was thoroughly underutilised, and we'd have to wait quite a while longer to see Richard E. Grant fully flex his evil muscles. Although that does get some bonus points for the Paternoster Gang and that awesome TARDIS entrance shot. Number 9. Last Christmas No, the Doctor doesn't meet George Michael in this episode, because that would be silly. He meets Father Christmas instead. 2014's Last Christmas has an extremely complicated plot involving dreams within dreams and giant crabs. However, at its core, it's an excellently written sci-fi story about our own perception of reality. It also has bags of emotion, including a standout moment where the Doctor thinks he's left Clara to grow old without him. It's a well-crafted plot, a seemingly unstoppable villain, plenty of Christmassy moments, and actual proper Father Christmas. Number 8. The Runaway Bride if your love interest had just been pulled into a different dimension, you'd be pretty bummed out. Equally, you'd be pretty shocked if Catherine Tate turned up in her wedding dress immediately after. That's the situation the 10th Doctor find himself in during 2006's Christmas special, The Runaway Bride. After returning Donald Noble to Earth, the Doctor discovers that she's part of a plot to populate the planet with a species of spider-like aliens called the Rachnos. He saves the day, but only thanks to Donna keeping his anger in check. This episode is really elevated by the exploration of the Doctor's heartache, but also by the real change in tone and the new dynamic that we have between Donna and the Doctor as to what we saw between Rose and the Doctor, and Catherine Tate really brought something new to Doctor Who that we hadn't really seen before. Number 7. Voyage of the Damned Now, some people loved that Kylie Minogue was in this episode and some people didn't. But if you put Kylie's involvement aside, this is a disaster movie set on an intergalactic version of the Titanic. And what's not to love about that? Now, the 2007 Christmas special does do a good job of setting up a bunch of different characters and then slowly killing them off over the course of 72 minutes, which isn't ideal. And the heavenly host killer robots maybe are a little bit goofy, but they also have a weird kind of sinister Christmassy feel, much like the robot Father Christmases that we see in the Christmas Invasion. But most importantly, Voyage of the Damned gives us two things. It's the first time we meet Wilf, God bless him, and it's also when we get to hear Alonzi Alonzo, which just makes everything better. Number 6. The Time of the Doctor 
Doctors really do like dying at Christmas, don't they? Matt Smith is the one waving bye-bye in this 2013 episode, which sees the Time Lords grant him a new regeneration cycle in his moment of need. It's an epic tragedy, full of all your favourite enemies, and the Doctor's impending demise hangs over it like a thick cloud. Handel's demise, Amy Pond's cameo, the Battle of Trenzalore, it's all very, very powerful. And while we all knew that Eleven would find a way around his lack of regenerations, the episode was still tense from the start to the end. Number 5. Twice Upon a Time Twice Upon a Time has a lot going for it. Its positives include David Bradley debuting as a recast First Doctor and the epic final monologue from Peter Capaldi before he regenerates into Jodie Whittaker. However, it's not without its faults. Pearl Mackey's Bill Potts does feel a little shoehorned in, and the First Doctor is kinda sexist. The whole point of this was that he's from a different time, literally, but the actual First Doctor wasn't nearly as misogynistic as Bradley's version was written here. Overall, Twice Upon a Time was a mixed bag, but it does end on a high, with one of the most emotive regeneration scenes in the show. Number 4. The Christmas Invasion the Christmas Invasion is a really good episode. The Sycorax take control of one third of the population using their blood before Harriet Jones, then current Prime Minister, blasts them to kingdom come while they run away. It also has the Robot Father Christmases and a whirling Christmas tree of doom, which is all you need in a Christmas special, really. But what elevates this episode, though, is it's the first full outing for David Tennant as the Tenth Doctor. Although he does spend most of the episode asleep, once Ten is awake, he he is awake. He wows us immediately with his charm and wit, while also teasing a darker side when he mercilessly dispatches the Sycorax leader. A great introduction to Tennant and Doctor Who at Christmas, the Christmas invasion still holds up all these years later. Number 3. The Husbands of River Song What's Christmas without a little tragedy, eh? 2015's Yuletide offering sees the 12th Doctor finally bid farewell to his beloved wife River Song, after years of the pair bumping into each other at various points across their respective time streams. This moment had been in the making for seven years, and it more than delivered on the feels. The Doctor and River's speech at the end of the episode tugs at the old heartstrings with full force, leaving you weeping into your Christmas leftovers. For the diehard fans, like myself, the husbands of River Song is near perfection. Top notch, quality, love River Song. Number 2. The End of Time The End of Time scores a festive double whammy with episodes on both Christmas Day and New Year's Day in 2009 and 2010 respectively. The Tenth Doctor battles the Master who has been dragged into a plot to bring the Time Lords back from the Time War. He is able to defeat his people but Wilfred Mott's four knocks mean that he does not leave the battle unscathed. David Tennant's farewell is the stuff of legend. From Wilf's knocking, to the procession of former companions, to the I don't want to go, it's all picture perfect. There wasn't a dry eye from anyone watching this at the time. Number 1. A Christmas Carol there is nothing more Christmassy than a Christmas Carol, and Matt Smith's first Christmas outing from 2010 has him jump back into a heartless old man's time stream in order to convince him to save a crashing spaceship. Along the way, he meets opera singer Catherine Jenkins, and there's also a flying shark because, well, it's Doctor Who, so that makes sense. The episode is incredibly bittersweet, revealing how Michael Gambon's character Kazran Sardik became so jaded in his older years. It also offers a unique take on Dickens' original source material, which has been adapted to death in recent years, but this adaptation is one of the superior takes. And that's my ranking. Now, like we said, your ranking might be completely different, so do let us know in the comments below. But remember, everybody's opinion is valid, so be kind. It's Christmas after all. I've been Ellie with Who Culture, and in the words of River Song herself, goodbye, sweeties.